The world of AI just took a massive leap forward. Robots aren't just thinking anymore, they're learning to move, react, and evolve. In Germany, Neuro Robotics just opened a robot gym. Not your regular gym where you go to work out, but a place where humanoid robots train to master real-world physics. And meanwhile, Neuralink just did something incredible. Their eighth patient, Nick Ray, who's battling ALS, fed himself using a robotic arm, powered purely by thought. Hey guys, Alfie here, and welcome back to AI Nexus. From AI muscles to human telepathy, the line between biology and machine has never been thinner. So let's start with Neuro Robotics, a German company that just opened what they're calling Neuro Gym, a gym for robots. Now, it's not your typical gym where robots hit the treadmill or lift weights. Instead, it's a massive physical AI training center designed to teach machines how to move, react, and adapt in the real world. Picture this, a giant facility filled with humanoid robots and robotic arms, all working side by side, learning real-world tasks by actually performing them. It's literally a gym, but for robots. And here's why this matters more than you think. For years, AI has been trained on text, images, and videos pulled from the internet, all digital data. But here's the problem. That approach doesn't work for robots that need to move and interact with the physical world. You can't learn to swim by reading about swimming, right? You've got to jump into the water. Same goes for robots. They need to touch, lift, balance, and feel resistance to truly understand the real world. That's exactly what Neura figured out. The CEO, David Rieger, says it perfectly. Learning to swim requires touching the water. Once robots get that first real-world experience, everything else, the simulations, the videos, the data, suddenly makes way more sense to them. But here's the crazy part. Neura isn't just running one gym. They're planning multiple locations worldwide. Why? Because the more environments and tasks these robots encounter, the smarter they get. And all of this data, every single interaction, flows into something called the Neuraverse. Now hold on, because the Neuraverse is where things get seriously cool. The Neuraverse is basically a global cloud platform, like an app store, but for robot skills. Think of it as a massive shared brain where every robot can upload what it learns and download what other robots have mastered. So, when one robot in Germany figures out how to perfectly fold a towel or assemble a tricky part, that knowledge instantly becomes available to every connected robot on the planet. It's a knowledge flywheel. More robots collecting data means smarter AI for everyone. It's collective learning at staggering scale. Here's how the whole system works. First, engineers build high-fidelity simulations of the task. They create virtual environments that match reality as closely as possible. Then they bring robots into the physical gym and use teleoperation to collect real-world data. Those humans aren't doing the task themselves. They're guiding the robot's own arms and hands, so the data reflects the robot's actual capabilities and constraints. Next, AI models get trained on the combined synthetic and real data sets. The models learn patterns, strategies, and skills. Then comes the testing phase. The robots try to perform the task autonomously. Engineers watch for failure modes. Where does it struggle? What goes wrong? They collect more targeted real-world data to fix those specific gaps. Then they train again, test again, collect again. It's an endless loop of improvement. Robots learning through movement, evolution, or danger. Drop evolution or danger in the comments. All right, let's back to the video. And Neura isn't keeping this to themselves. Companies can actually book space in the Neura gym. Bring your own tasks. Bring your own robots if you want. Use Neura's trainers and infrastructure to solve your specific challenges. It's robotics training as a service. Neura has already partnered with NVIDIA to use Isaac Sim for their simulation work. They're building new factories in China and joint manufacturing facilities in India to scale production. They started with one gym, but the plan is to expand to multiple locations worldwide. More gyms mean more task diversity, more robots, more data, a truly global physical AI engine. Now let's talk about something even more staggering. While robots are learning to interact with the world, humans are learning to control machines with pure thought. Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain-computer interface company, just hit a milestone that sounds like it was ripped straight out of a cyberpunk novel. 
Meet Nick Ray. Nick is a patient with ALS, a devastating disease that took away his ability to move his arms. ALS basically locks you inside your own body. But Nick became Neuralink's eighth human trial participant. And what happened next is honestly surreal. Using his Neuralink implant, Nick controlled a robotic arm with nothing but his thoughts and fed himself for the first time since his paralysis. Let that sink in. His brain talking directly to a robot arm, picking up food and bringing it to his mouth. No physical movement from Nick at all. Just pure thought. Neuralink posted the video and it's unbelievable. You see Nick sitting there, focusing, and the robotic arm moves smoothly to the plate, picks up food, brings it to him. He's smiling. And Nick himself tweeted about the experience, saying, Life with my BC. I has been and continues to be so surreal and so rewarding. Can't wait to see what comes next. I mean, imagine losing the ability to feed yourself and then getting it back through a brain chip. That's life-changing, literally. But here's what makes this truly groundbreaking. This isn't just about moving a cursor on a screen. Previous Neuralink patients have done that. They've typed. They've played video games like Mario Kart using thought alone. But Nick's achievement is different. He's performing a fine motor task with a real physical robot. That's a whole new level of control and precision. So how does this tech actually work? The Neuralink device, often called the N1 or telepathy chip, is about the size of a coin. Surgeons implant it into the motor cortex, the part of your brain that controls movement. Inside that tiny chip are up to 1,024 ultra-thin electrode threads. These threads pick up electrical signals from your neurons. When Nick thinks about moving his arm, his brain fires specific patterns of activity. The implant detects those patterns in real time. A wearable transmitter sends the signals via Bluetooth to an external processor. That processor decodes the intent and translates it into commands for the robotic arm. The entire process happens fast enough that it feels natural, like the robot is an extension of Nick's own body. Nick's part of Neuralink's PRIME trial, which started enrolling patients with severe paralysis. As of October 2025, 12 patients have received the implant, and Neuralink's aiming for about 25 by year's end. Right now, only people with paralysis from conditions like ALS or spinal cord injuries qualify. But get this, over 10,000 people have joined the waiting list. 10,000. That shows you the demand and the hope people have for this technology. Imagine controlling a robot arm with your thoughts. Would you try a Neuralink chip if it was safe? Comment, I would, or no way. Earlier Neuralink patients have already done amazing things. They've controlled computer cursors, typed messages, even played video games like Mario Kart using only their minds. But Nick's achievement is the first time someone used Neuralink to perform a fine motor task with a real physical robot. Feeding yourself requires precision, timing, spatial awareness. This isn't just moving a cursor on a screen. This is manipulating the real world. And Nick nailed it. But here's where it gets even crazier. Elon Musk and Neuralink are thinking way bigger. Musk tweeted about the future possibilities, and one statement really stands out. In the future, Neuralink could help people with spinal cord injuries walk again. Even with a broken neck, brain signals could be rerouted around damaged neurons, restoring full body movement and functionality. Think about that. Your spine might be severed, but your brain still knows how to walk. If Neuralink can capture those signals and send them wirelessly to implants in your legs or to an exoskeleton, you could bypass the damage entirely. Paralyzed people could walk, run, dance again. And Musk's talked about even wilder goals long-term. Restoring vision for the blind, streaming sound for the deaf, even merging human intelligence with AI. Memory uploads, telepathy between people, enhanced cognition. Those ideas sound like pure sci-fi, and they're still years or decades away. But Nick Ray feeding himself? That's happening now. That's the proof of concept. That's the first real step toward a future where neural interfaces give people back their autonomy, their independence, their lives. So here's what just happened in the span of one story. We've got robots in Germany learning to master the physical world by actually touching it, sharing knowledge instantly across the globe through the Neuroverse. And we've got a man in a Neuralink trial controlling a robot arm with his mind, feeding himself after years of paralysis. Two breakthroughs, same week, both pushing the boundaries of what's possible. 
Machines learning to think by doing. Humans learning to control machines by thinking. The line between biology and technology is blurring fast, and honestly, we're just getting started. The future isn't coming, it's already here, and it's more incredible than we imagined. Which breakthrough blows your mind more? Robots learning to move or humans moving robots by thought? Comment Nura or Neuralink. What if I told you that China just rolled out an army of robots so advanced, they make Boston Dynamics look like a toy company? I'm talking about mechanical beasts that can carry 352 pounds, about 160 kilograms, robot dogs armed with assault rifles, and underwater drones mapping our ocean floors right now. Welcome to the future of warfare. And frankly, it's both incredible and terrifying. While we've been debating whether ChatGPT will take our jobs, China has been building something far more consequential. They're not just developing robots. They're engineering an entirely new form of warfare called intelligentized combat. Think of it as war where algorithms make life and death decisions faster than any human ever could. The stakes? Global military dominance for the next century. While the world commemorated the 80-year anniversary of World War II's end, China used that symbolic moment to showcase weapons that make that entire conflict look primitive. The guest list alone should make every defense analyst lose sleep. Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un stood shoulder to shoulder with Xi Jinping on the viewing platform at Tiananmen Square. Think about those optics for a second. The leaders of Russia, North Korea, and China, representing the world's most advanced nuclear arsenals and largest standing armies, publicly demonstrating their alliance. This wasn't diplomatic courtesy. This was coordinated intimidation on a global stage. The robot dogs stole the headlines, and for good reason. These four-legged mechanical predators rode on vehicles like loyal hunting companions, but their capabilities are anything but cute. Military analysts describe them as battlefield reconnaissance and assault units designed for urban warfare. The psychological impact on enemy troops would be devastating. Imagine facing machines that don't feel fear, don't need rest, and can process targeting information faster than human reflexes. Here's what most people don't realize. This isn't some distant sci-fi fantasy. These systems are operational right now. Chinese forces deployed armed robot dogs during their Golden Dragon 2024 exercise with Cambodia. Real soldiers, real weapons, real combat scenarios. The footage shows these mechanical predators moving through urban environments, firing mounted rifles with deadly precision. But here's the crazy part. The robot dog everyone's talking about isn't even China's most impressive creation. Meet the Mechanical Yak, a four-legged monster that redefines battlefield logistics. This beast weighs in at massive proportions and can haul 160 kilograms of cargo while hitting speeds of 10 kilometers per hour. Picture a robotic pack animal that never gets tired, never needs food, and can traverse deserts, snowfields, and rocky terrain that would stop traditional vehicles cold. It's equipped with 12 joint modules that give it movement capabilities that seem almost alien. We're talking about a machine that can jump, sprint, turn on a dime, and navigate diagonally through obstacles that would challenge human soldiers. The Yak represents something profound. China isn't just building weapons. They're reimagining how armies move, fight, and survive in hostile environments. While Western militaries focus on expensive, high-tech platforms, China is mass-producing intelligent systems that can operate in swarms. Imagine facing not one of these machines, but hundreds, all coordinated by artificial intelligence. Then there's the Bloodwing platform, and this one will give you chills. Picture this scenario. Enemy drones drop robot dogs armed with machine guns directly onto rooftops behind your lines. No warning, no traditional assault routes, just sudden mechanical death raining from the sky. The Bloodwing carries a QBB-97 light machine gun capable of firing 650 rounds per minute with a 400-meter effective range. It's designed for urban warfare, specifically rooftop suppression and what military analysts call 3D pincer attacks. The psychological impact alone is staggering. Traditional soldiers trained to fight humans with predictable behaviors and limitations. How do you mentally prepare to face machines that don't feel fear, don't need rest, and can process targeting information faster than human reflexes? These aren't remote-controlled toys. 
They're autonomous hunters designed to eliminate human targets with algorithmic precision. But wait, it gets more unsettling. China's EOD robots are being mass-produced for explosive ordnance disposal, but their dual-use nature means they can easily transition to offensive operations. These tracked machines navigate like mini-tanks through rough terrain, equipped with robotic arms capable of precise manipulation. Today, they're diffusing bombs. Tomorrow, they could be planting them. The same sensors that detect explosives can identify human heat signatures. The same arms that disarm devices can position lethal charges. Here's where things get really wild. China isn't stopping at land-based systems. Their sea-wing underwater gliders are already mapping our ocean floors, conducting intelligence operations that most people don't even know are happening. These stealthy machines can operate for months underwater, gathering data about submarine routes, port vulnerabilities, and coastal defenses. Indonesia and Vietnam have been finding these devices in their waters since 2016. Think about that. China has been conducting robotic reconnaissance of strategic waterways for nearly a decade. The most terrifying aspect isn't the individual platforms. It's the ecosystem they're creating. Chinese military doctrine calls for wolf pack tactics where multiple robot systems work together under AI coordination. Picture swarms of aerial drones providing targeting data to ground-based robot dogs, while underwater gliders map escape routes and surface vessels coordinate the entire operation. Human soldiers become system managers rather than frontline fighters. Military experts are calling this transformation intelligentized warfare, and China believes it's their path to overtaking American military dominance. They're betting that algorithms can outthink human commanders, that mass-produced robots can overwhelm expensive conventional weapons, and that artificial intelligence can compress decision-making cycles beyond human capabilities. The timeline is what should keep defense planners awake at night. China has set 2027 as their target for achieving full, intelligentized military capabilities. That's three years from now. By 2035, they plan to have completely transformed their armed forces into an AI-driven fighting machine. We're not talking about gradual modernization. We're watching the most rapid military transformation in human history. The implications stretch far beyond military conflict. These technologies will reshape global power dynamics, influence international law, and challenge fundamental assumptions about warfare ethics. When machines can make kill decisions autonomously, who bears responsibility for their actions? When robot armies can operate without human soldiers, what happens to traditional concepts like surrender, prisoner treatment, and civilian protection? China's robot army represents more than technological advancement. It's a strategic bet that the future belongs to whoever masters the intersection of artificial intelligence, robotics, and military doctrine. They're not just building better weapons. They're rewriting the rules of power projection and global influence. The question isn't whether this technology will change warfare. The question is whether the rest of the world can adapt fast enough to maintain strategic balance in an age of mechanical soldiers. What we're witnessing isn't just military innovation. It's the birth of an entirely new form of human conflict, and China is determined to write the first chapter. The robot revolution isn't coming. It's already here.